If I was to hide my rats around my house and let my cat seek them out and hunt them for his own entertainment, how many of you would immediately cancel me and tell me that I'm neglecting my rats? If you are subscribed because you love rats, 95% of you would probably feel that way. But what if I told you this was a recognised dog sport that uses live rats? So this sport is called barn hunt or barn hunting and it's only something that I've been made aware of recently. I think it is gaining popularity within the dog community but I thought it'd be interesting to react to this and see what you guys think as rat lovers but before we pass any judgement I wanted to take a look at one of their websites and kind of read to you what barn hunting actually is and some of the welfare aspects they supposedly put in place to make sure the rats don't suffer. So according to the BHA, the Barn Hunt Association, what is barn hunt? In barn hunt, dogs locate rats that are safely enclosed in aerated tubes, hidden in a straw hay bale maze. It's a timed event with three different dog height divisions. Are the rats hurt or killed in barn hunt? Absolutely not. Though the event is called barn hunt, we are not hunting rats to kill them. Instead, dogs locate rats who are safely enclosed in aerated tubes that are built to be tough enough for dogs to be unable to crush or even get a tooth into. The tubes are large enough for the rats to be able to turn around and they are kept on bedding so they're comfortable. They often spend their time grooming or even sleeping in the tubes. Many enjoy the sport and interacting with the dogs, okay? As a species, rats like small, dark spaces. They feel very safe in the tubes. Rat care and safety is of paramount importance to the sport and has been from day one. Our rat care guidelines were developed with assistance from well-qualified sources who have spent decades studying housing and caring for rats. We like rats and would never harm them physically or mentally for the sport. So then let's look at this website of someone who actually owns the rats and uses them in barn hunt and it says, are the rats stressed? It's a valid question and one that I was wondering myself when I was thinking about starting training. With my new rats, I give them a couple of weeks to acclimate to me and the new surroundings. When they are comfortable in their new space, they learn to go into the tubes, get sniffed by my dogs and hear my dogs barking from a distance. I bring my dogs down at feeding time, so they associate the dogs with food. When they don't show any fear of that, then I move to more advanced training, they get barked at whilst in the tube, get used to the tube moving, and get poured at whilst in the tube. I have a small sturdy cage for dogs that are unsure about the rats and need to see the rats to get more interest, and it's obvious the rats are not stressed by the cage, they take treats, groom themselves and investigate the dogs. They are very smart animals and have never been hurt by a dog, so they have no reason to fear them. Just the opposite, each time they are around the dogs, they get food or treats, so they see the dogs as a way to get good things, they also know the dogs can't get them. So I do think all of those are really good points and it does seem like they go to extra efforts to make sure the rats are acclimated and comfortable with the tubes they use. I was also watching this video last night called Coaching for Barn Hunt Rats and it's someone showing the process of clicker training the rats and using positive reinforcement which is good because the rats are obviously not forced and pressured to be in these tubes, they're doing it because they know they're going to get a treat which is the right way to go about this but if 90% of their interactions with these tubes are at home and positive I still think in the moment when they're being tossed around possibly or barked at in close proximity to dogs because these tubes aren't see-through you can't see the rat's reaction you can't see whether they're stressed in the moment or not so let's carry on reading let's see what we think since we can't know what they're thinking we have to observe body language and behavior to assess their state of mind just like we do with dogs they go willingly into the tubes sometimes i don't think they would do it if they were bothered by what they surely know is about to happen and they usually just saunter out the tubes at the end of training, but sometimes they don't want to come out. While in the clear tube, I have seen them trying to sniff the dogs, rearrange their bedding, groom themselves, eat straw, and even take a nap. More than once, I've had to wake them up so a dog that needed to see them could get more interested. When rats are afraid, they try to make themselves very small, hide and freeze. The ends of the clear tube are solid, so if the rat wanted to hide, it would go into the end cap, but I don't see that happening. Instead, they either seem oblivious or interested in what the dog is doing. The dog below had so little interest in the rats that I felt safe opening the tube to let him see her. Okay. The rules of barn hunt require there to be bedding in the tube with the rat. This provides some cushion if the tube does get rolled. The bedding slides around inside the tube, allowing the rat to remain stable in the center as the tube rolls around with them. And they do brace themselves if the tube moves suddenly, but then they go back about their business like nothing happened. 
The Barnhood rules are written to protect the rats. There are specifications on the construction of the tubes to ensure there's enough air holes and the holes aren't too large or small and the tubes are sturdy and secure. There are rules regarding how a tube may be hidden so it's not too deeply buried and it's not set at too much of an angle which might force the rats into only one end. The rules penalise handlers for not calling the rat quickly enough if the dog is scratching or biting at the tube in a way that endangers the rat. Rat wranglers are required inside the ring at trials and fun tests and their sole focus is the safety of the rats. If a dog is moving the tube too much, they remove or stabilise the tube until the dog can be removed. The rules also specify the rats must be changed often so the rats don't get too hot and they have an opportunity to get food and water. I only work my rats for about an hour before switching to fresh rats. So that does sound a lot more reassuring, it does sound like there are rules in place to protect the rats and make sure people are thinking of the rats and their welfare but as with any sport or hobby, the degree people stick to this does depend on the individual. Then if we scroll down they've got some training videos and then showing how they keep the rats and then the pictures of the rats getting vet care, vet treatment and a picture of their cage. I don't doubt these rats are very well cared for, obviously you can see they do have proper setups. Not exactly how I would do it, but they do have big enough cages and enrichment and things like that. So the rats are not just kept in tanks or bin setups, they are treated like a pet, but they're also there for a secondary reason, which is to take part in this dog sport. Okay, so let's react to and watch some videos of this sport. I'm gonna keep the sound on just so you can get an idea of the environment. Okay, so if you've ever been to any dog sporting event like agility or something else, you know it's a very highly strung, loud environment. The people are excited, the dogs are excited, the people are trying to hype them up. This seems no different, you've got people shouting, clapping, laughing, the dogs barking. It does seem like quite a loud environment for the rats. Next up we have got this little dash hound that is doing the barn hunt and jumping all over the hay bale. So let's watch this one. Okay, I think he's found one and just pushed it off the edge of the hay bale, not a drastic drop and they probably do have cushioning in there but not nice for the rats to suddenly be yeeted off a hay bale. I'm guessing the woman that was standing there is supposed to be the rat wrangler. She was just in a world of her own, not paying attention enough to catch the rats but let's carry on, hopefully he doesn't do that again. He's nudging it, he's flipping it and she's taking it away and passing it to someone else. Is there one more to find, I think? Oh, I think he's found it. He's digging it and he's knocked it off again. Great, brilliant. Next up we have a terrier. They are literally bred to do this job and they can be quite loud, so let's see. He's found it. He is barking right next to the tube and he's trying to bite the tube. He has found another one, I think. He's barking literally into the tube. I would not want a terrier barking in my ear, and my hearing is nowhere near as good as a rat's hearing, so. Yeah. <laughs> barking again right next to the tubes, and growling and trying to bite the tube. Okay. So in summary, do I think this is an inherently evil practice where every single rat taking part in this is suffering? No, I don't because it does seem like a lot of people are putting the time and effort into reinforcing their rats and using positive reinforcement. I can't speak for how those rats are feeling in the moment, but would I personally do this? I love dogs. I want to take part in dog sports. I don't think I would because I don't think these people doing this are rat lovers that also have dogs. I think they're more dog lovers that also happen to have rats and they might enjoy them, they might enjoy having them in cages and spending time with them, but I think their primary focus is the dogs and not so much the rats. My biggest, I guess, question or concern with this is the stress level of the rats. Obviously some people are going the extra mile to make sure they know rat behaviour and the subtle signs. The rats are really good at hiding stress and illness and stress can bring on things like respiratory infections and as someone who spends a lot of time trying to avoid things like that and trying to avoid stress as much as possible, that does concern me. 
My biggest question regarding this entire thing is, is there not an alternative? I think in this day and age, there's always ways to find alternatives that are a lot more ethical. And I'm not too sure why they're not doing this because there's not really a visual aspect to this. They can't really see the rats. They're buried underneath layers of hay and then also in the tubes which most of the time seem to be opaque. They can't really see rats to get visual cues. They're mostly working on scent and I'm not too sure if they can even hear the rats above all of the background noise. So 90% of this is scent based and surely there's alternatives to using a live animal in this. They could use the rat's waste as an example. They could even use dead frozen rats that are thawed out, things like that. Are they not better alternatives to using live animals? Surely someone has thought of that. There's many other dog sports out there that once upon a time probably did use real animals, but now there's lots of realistic lures, things like fast cat or running greyhounds. They're still getting all of that enrichment and exercise without having to use a prey animal. So as someone who loves rats and has my rats as a top priority, would I participate in a sport like this with them? No, absolutely not. I just don't see what's in it for them and what the point is for them. They don't really benefit from this. Of course, there is the argument that some rats enjoy this and they do get positive reinforcement, but there's many other ways to train your rats or give your rats positive reinforcement that don't involve using them as something like this. I do think this is mostly for the dogs and the rats aren't really getting much out of it. But let me know what you think. I would love to hear your opinions in the comments. Do you think this dog sport is ethical? Would you let your rats participate in something like this? Let me know in the comments. But until then, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.